Hello everyone, my name is Nick and welcome if you're new. Today we're going to do part two of my summer house plant tour where I show you guys the remainder of my 350 house plants that I have hiding in my bathroom and in here in my bedroom. I think that I have my coolest plants hiding in here in my bedroom because this is where I keep the humidity up and where I keep the fan blowing. So I think you guys are going to like what you see. So if you liked part one, you're definitely going to like part two. So I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to start part two over here in the bathroom where I have just a few plants to show you guys. Just for reference, that window right there is an east-facing window and it's frosted, so this is probably the darkest room in my home. However, I am fortunate enough to have a bathroom with a window in it, which not a lot of people in the city have. So the first plant right over here is the Sansevieria Gold Flame. So it's just a similar to a, a Laurentii or a yellow-edged Sansevieria, but it has a little bit more yellow in the leaves. Then right here is a Ficus Lyrata or Fiddle Leaf Fig. And kind of hiding under it is some type of bromeliad right there, not exactly sure which one. And then that's a Haworthia fairy tale washboard Haworthia or a Haworthia limifolia. And then this is a rather large uh, watermelon peperomia or peperomia argyria. It looks really nice. I like how big the leaves are. Really love this one. And then if I pull back the watermelon le leaves, you can see I have another Sansevieria cylindrica boncle hiding back there or the starfish Sansevieria. Then up here is a lovely asparagus fern or asparagus cetaceous, I believe. Really, really lovely plant. It's, it needs a lot of light, and it's not a fern, although it's called an asparagus fern, but it definitely can behave like a fern. However, you definitely want to give this a little bit more light than a fern would, or I'd find that it would yellow up quite a bit. I have a little bit of yellow growth down here, as you can see. Then up in the window, I was kind of stuffed as much as I can. Right here is a saxifraga, or a uh, strawberry begonia, so a really lovely plant. And then in the little pot right here is a little Hoya Bella that has a little peduncle on it, as you can see, just coming off right there. So that's exciting to see. This is actually a gift Hoya Bella from a, a coworker. Then there's a Phalaenopsis orchid right here that I got to bloom again this winter, and now it's still blooming at in midsummer. I can't believe it's still blooming. Honestly, this thing has been in bloom since January, and it's just dropped off a few leaves. And then it even randomly put off a few more flowers than the last month or so. So I, I, I can't believe that. There's a little Peperomia glabella hiding in that shot glass. And then there's a little Sansevieria right here, but honestly, I think it's kind of dead. I think I need to replace the Sansevieria, but you know what? I can kind of fool people into thinking it's alive if I just kind of lay it up against there. There is a Scindapsis pictus exotica growing down the shelf right here. It's really loving life. It looks like I got this new planter for it and it's really happy. And then up here is a Maranta Lucanura Kirchoviana variegata, so a variegated green prayer plant. You probably can't get the best look at this, let me kind of fold it down. So here's a look at it, just a variegated Maranta. Probably could use a little bit more light from that white kind of turning brown, but I was kind of expecting that to happen with this plant because that was a, a rather white leaf. And then I do have a Neon Pothos up here, or a Pipernum aureum. Then down here, oh hi, there's me. And then there's this Sansevieria. I think this is a Samurai Sansevieria, but it's a more mature one, so it's got this big chunky leaf coming out. The older leaves look very similar to that like dwarf Sansevieria Samurai that I had in the last tour. I don't think I gave you guys a really good look at it, but just so you can get an idea. And then right here, it's a rather dead looking Calathea Maui Queen. I was kind of thinking about throwing it out before I did this tour, but I wanted to show you guys that I kill plants too. I absolutely do. So honestly, probably going to go in the trash after I'm done filming, but I just wanted to show you guys. All right, so now we're going to move over to the bedroom where I think I have the coolest plants. Before we go through everything one by one, I just have to let you guys know that there is absolutely no rhyme nor reason to the way I have these plants out. I just really have them in places that they seem to grow. Um, so it's it's very messy. I'm going to be real with you. It's very messy in here. There's leaves on the floor. Um, I didn't want to clean up too much and kind of be fake. I wanted it to be, you know, real. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you guys one by one. So over here, I have an Aspidistra Alady or Milky Way, or it's a cast iron Milky Way. So this one, not the easiest. I mentioned in the last video that I don't think cast iron plants are the easiest plants. They just get a lot of brown tips for me. They just, they're not the easiest. I don't really know why the internet says they're so easy. Um, and then down on the bottom shelf, I just have a few plants that I'm propagating. So there's mon some Monstera Edinsonii on the left and some Philodendron Burl Marks on the right. And then up to my actual plants. So, in this shelf right here, I have this lovely philodendron podatum, so it's a nice lobey philodendron. I really like lobed philodendron or lobed plants in general. And then hiding behind that is a little Hoya, I think that's Hoya, it's either Hoya Wayetii or Hoya 
Cantiana, I'm not too sure. And then this is a Hoya Carnosa Rubra, so it's just the, the Hoya that gets the lovely cream variegation on the inside. A little dusty, I'm sorry. Um, there's another Hoya right back there, that's Hoya Fichii, so it's a pretty interesting Hoya. It's very veiny, very veiny leaves, a really, really cool one. Sorry, it's kind of hiding back there. It hasn't done much for me yet, but it will. Um, a Calathea Vitata, so getting some brown edges, not the easiest Calathea. Uh, I have some other Calatheas that grow a little bit better for me, as you'll see as this video commences, but yeah, not a beautiful plant, but really not an easy plant. Uh, there's just a little Sansevieria Trifasciata Hanii hiding back there. And inside that glass is some Selaginella or Club Moss, so just get a little look at that. It's been growing really, really well for me inside the glass. I've only had it for a few months, though. And there is a Stromanthe Sanguinea, just a, a standard one with just the no white on the leaves and then there's still the red on the back, so really love that one, been wanting it for a while. And then this trailer plant right up here is a Peperomia Scandens variegata, as you can see by the tag. But it's kind of like similar to a philodendron in its look, but it's in the way that it grows, but it is most certainly a Peperomia, so really lovely Peperomia. Then there's some more of that philodendron I showed you guys in the terrarium in part one that has the red on the back. Then this is a Deschidia. This is Deschidia oeantha. And then some more of that aquatic moss that I showed you in the first video. This one has definitely grown a lot more. I can barely even like see through the glass. You can kind of just like see the moss coming up through the top. So I think I need to separate that one and give it some more room. Then there is a Calathea Roseopicta rosy right there, so that gets some of the like pink brush strokes, and it's a rather glittery Calathea, so I, I really like this one. It's Peperomia obtusifolia green edge. Then this is a uh, Begonia frosted, really lovely Begonia. It's been blooming really well for me too, except it's right above my pillow, so it kind of just like drops blooms on my pillow when it's done blooming. Other than that, it doesn't really. You rubbed me the wrong way. Um, back here is a Calathea rotundifolia, similar to an orbifolia, but it's got some purple on the backs of the leaves, so a little bit different. And then the last one on the shelf is this philodendron burl marks that's kind of getting all over the place. Moving on up, we have a Pilea glauca right here, really lovely one. And then some pep Peperomia trinervula, or trinervula, whatever you want to call it. Some more Senecio macroglossus variegatus growing down. Wax ivy, they call it variegated wax ivy, one of my favorite plants. And then this is one of everyone's favorite. This is Raphidophora tetrasperma, kind of growing up and around. This is one that I propagated off my mother plant in my living room. And then this is some type of Diefenbachia. I think it's Diefenbachia tiki. And then one of my favorite Calatheas. This is Calathea macoyana, one of the easiest ones to grow in my experience. Although they're still not easy to grow in the winter, but no Calathea is easy to grow in the winter time. There, it's kind of hard to see. There's a begonia red planet in the glass back there. And then some Marantas. This one is a Maranta Lucanera Kirchoviana variegata. And then this is just a standard Maranta Lucanera Kirchoviana. And I'm realizing that sounds like total gibberish the more I say it. Um, hiding on the top shelf, there is an Ishkananthus uh, variegata, or Ishkananthus radicans variegata. So it's just a variegated lipstick plant. Hasn't flowered for me yet, but it's been growing pretty well, so I've been happy with it. Then there is a larger Peperomia cubensis compared to the other one that I have in the living room. And then a philodendron, gotta get up on my bed, a philodendron jungle boogie up here that is just growing, growing like crazy, as you can see. It's get, the leaves are getting really long. Alrighty, and then we're gonna move over to the other shelf. So there's me on the bed, okay. So, oh wow, this is gonna be a lot to go through and show you guys. Okay, so down here is my Calathea orbifolia, and I get so many questions about how I get this plant to grow. Um, I have another Calathea orbifolia that is smaller that you will see as this video goes on, but I will say that like when you buy them big, they're just like already growing and like doing well. I think, you know, this is just my theory, but this plant has like always grown really well for me. It still gets some brown, so you can see, like, it's it's not growing perfectly, but it, it is growing really well. You can see some new leaves that just came in. There's kind of another one that's hiding down here. Yeah, it's it's a really lovely plant. It's it just, it's if you can find them big, I would definitely not worry about killing it, as long, you know, I have it in some pretty good conditions. There's a fan blowing on it right there. I know my fan's really dusty, don't judge me. Um, and I have a humidifier going, like, right under it, but 
Yeah, really, really easy calathea in my experience. I know other people haven't exactly had that experience. And so moving over to the shelf. So I told you it's really messy. There's just a few monster spub perus that I'm propagating down there. Um, and then, so we got some prayer plants in this corner because the, the Calathea orbifolia is doing well, so I have a lot of prayer plants over in this area. So this is another Tenanthi Setosa, and then behind that is a Tenanthi Burl Marxii. Uh, there's a Stromanthi Sanguinea Triostar hiding back here. It's a very small one, very kind of sad one. And then a Hoya Puba Calyx. I propagated this one from cuttings that someone sent me last summer, and it's now got some nice vines going on it, as you can see. And it's got a peduncle from when they sent it to me, so cool plant. Uh, there is my Maranta Lucanura Maricella, or my Lemon Lime Maranta, in my cat pot. And a Calathea Beauty Star right there with the green kind of brush strokes on the leaves. And then there's another Calathea that's Calathea Zabrina. It's kind of died back a little bit, but I have a lot of like new growth shooting up from the base, so I kind of have some high hopes for this one. And then over here, there's another uh, one of those Hoyas, like the Hoya Wayetii or Kentiana. I'm not too sure which one it is. And then uh, Pilea. This Pilea is getting very bright. I'm sorry. Uh, so this is an aluminum plant, or Pilea uh, Cadirii. So this one, it grows in this pot, but then they kind of get, like, you know, wonky and kind of go down. So I really like the way that it kind of just, like, grows all over the place. Really, really lovely plant. And then Tradescantia fluminensis tricolor, or the tricolor wandering Jew. This is some more Epipernum pinnatum Cebu blue. I have a lot of this in my house. It's a very blue pothos. Sorry, the light's not very good in this corner since we're kind of getting back there. But it's it's growing down. It's growing really, really well. I should probably move it and give it some more spotlight. I normally have grow lights on these plants too, as you can see right there. But with its being, it's a very ugly purple color, so I didn't want to have that going throughout this video, but I have my Peperomia obtusifolia golden gate back there. Sorry, I know the light's really bad and I see a bad leaf, so I'm gonna pick off this gross leaf and just kind of toss it into the abyss. Um, and then there's another Peperomia back there. I really apologize about how dark it's getting. So this is a Peperomia orba, Peperomia orba pixie. There's a lot more to it back there. Alright, so we finish up this shelf, and good thing, because it's getting really dark, so let's move up to the next shelf. Um, if we start over on this side, I can give you guys kind of a look of what we're seeing. So this is a pepper, I'm sorry, a Hoya, I called it a Peperomia in my last house tour. I was about to call it a Peperomia again. Um, this is a Hoya Carnosa Tricolor, so it's the one with the, the white on the outside, and it gets some nice pink foliage. This is a Pelionia Repens, actually I think this might be Pelionia Devania. I think this has like a few different names. I don't know which one's accurate, but you can let me know in the comments. Then this is a lovely Hoya right here. This is Hoya Retusa. So it's a very like stringy Hoya. It's very like clefted. I really, really like it. And um, a fern, one of my only ferns besides that staghorn fern. So this is a maidenhair fern and it's been actually doing really well. Do you see all this new, new growth right here? It like died back pretty much completely. Um, and then put off all these new fronds. Actually, I'm pretty sure my roommate's cat ate most of it, but it's in the Buddha pot. It looks really good. Kind of just covers it really lush. Um, this is a Calathea warsawishii. So, kind of a mouthful of a name, but it's a lovely, very velvety Calathea, and I'm always wary for bugs on this plant, so I'm like always checking it. But um, I, I killed one of these last summer pretty hard, so I've been pretty wary about this one, but it, it put off a new leaf. On each plant so I'm feeling okay about it. There's a Calathea Freddy over here. I've had this one for a really long time and it looks like it because it looks tired <laughs> and the new growth is just like not coming in very well so I don't know. I'm This plant's gonna probably get retired eventually but I'm not just gonna throw it out when it looks like this because the new the old leaves still look pretty good. And there's some more Calatheas hiding back there. So there's a Calathea orbifolia, that's the smaller one I was talking about, that still grows but doesn't grow as rampant as the one that I have on the ground. And then there's a Calathea mosaica back there. It's a really lovely plant, but I kind of have it really kind of hidden, so maybe I should give it some more spotlight. There's another Pilea cateri. Actually, I should mention that the one down here is Pilea cateri minima, so it's a smaller variety. Well, this one up here is your standard Pilea cateri, so it's or I don't even know how to pronounce it, but um, the, the aluminum plant. So this one's just got some larger leaves to it. 
There is uh, my Anthurium VGI that I got from Pistols Nursery. I did a little quick unboxing as one of my recent videos. And then this is a Deschidia, Deschidia Acuminata. Right back here, this is a Piperinum pinnatum. So it looks very similar to a Raphidophora tetrasperma, but it's kind of, it's the same plant as the Cebu Blue Pothos, but I think this is just a different cultivar or variety that's just like grown to be, you know, splits. It got, it's split city over here. Uh, there's another Pilea caderii or caderi. This one's variegated, so this is a variegata. Um, more Pilea. This is Pilea pubescens silver cloud, so it's got some really funky silver foliage that really stands out amongst the rest. There is a Peperomia grisio argentea, which is the pink lady version, so it gets some really lovely pink foliage to the leaves. And the light's getting funky again, I'm sorry. Got to pull up some foliage. So there's an Aglaonema hiding back there. I think that's the Silver Queen. And then that's a Philodendron Mayoi. And a Philodendron Brazil. <laughs> there's a lot of plants hiding other plants. So we're going to have to do some, you know, some of this and that. Um, speaking of which, this is uh, Calicia Repens, I'm pretty sure. And it is a variegated version, but this one I've had for a long time, and it's lost a lot of its variegation, but I really like the way it's grown. It's like a total curtain, but it's kind of hiding my other plants, so I gotta pull it up to show you guys that Peperomia. Um, there is a Philodendron Brantianum right here. I really, really love this plant. I have another one I showed you guys in the living room. And, oh God, this shelf is a nightmare. Let me kind of like pull back and show you guys. This is a task in its own. I could do a whole video on this shelf. So over here, there is some Raphidophora tetrasperma. And is there anything behind there? Yeah, there's some Philodendron micans. And I think all the way in the back, there's some silver squills, but I'm not even gonna try to get back there. Uh, okay, let's pull up this Philodendron. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here for this adventure with me because I really never mess with this shelf. So there's some Monstera Spa Peru hiding back there. And then some variegated Monstera, the Albo variegata. And then this is Philodendron Pink Princess right here. <laughs> I think I saw a comment on part one being like, where are all your aeroids? Like, there's none of my favorite plants. Well, I got a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of your favorite plants right here in this one shot. Uh, so let's get out of this way. So this is a Syngonium right here. This is Syngonium aridum, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced, or artium, Arturium. I, I forget exactly, I'll put it on the screen. And then a Philodendron bipinifolium, really, really lovely Lobi Philodendron. Uh, did I show you guys the Hoya Curtisii that's hiding back there? It's right in that pot there. And then all the way back there is a Peperomia rugosa. And then that's a Peperomia harmonies pumpkin. Oh my gosh, it's, it's so hard to show you guys any of this stuff. But um, it's a nice orange Peperomia. And then there's some more Peperomia back there. I think that's Peperomia glabella. And then <laughs> Peperomia caparata variegata. This is just an absolute mess. Uh, there is some Pilea silver tree back there and some Monstera sultipacana growing up all around there. And then this is Philodendron gloriosa. And I'll kind of pull back and give you guys a better look at that pot. It's quite a full pot, but I'm it's still pretty young. I haven't chopped any of it off yet. <laughs> There's so many plants. I'm like so overwhelmed right now. Um, that's a Peperomia piccolo banda. This one right here. So a really lovely Peperomia. This Hoya would get out of my way. A really, really lovely Peperomia. And then that is a little seedling of a Clivia in there. And what else do I have? Oh, Philodendron, more Philodendron Pink Princess. This is just a little like single node cutting I had going. And now it's got this new leaf. So, none of these plants are for sale, by the way. Please don't send me any emails asking to buy any of my plants. They're not for sale. But this is Peperomia Hoffmanii. So you can see by the tag, so I can save myself putting it on the screen. One of my favorite Peperomias. I feel like I over, always overlook this one, but it is just so lush. I love it. It's like, you can't even see the pot that it's planted in. It's just, it's so lush. Some Seropegia woody eye variegata that I'm rooting so I can put it back in the main pot and then have even more of it. I think it's rooted. I can probably plant it up by now. There is some oak leaf cissus right here. And then, woo, I think we made it to the last one on this shelf. Uh, it's my begonia, my special angel, which is a really, really lovely angel wing begonia. 
If we work our way up to the top, I have a very mature cutting. I have two of them of some golden pothos. And then there's some other cuttings in the pot like Monster Adansonii, as you can see. And I think there's like something else in there. Oh, there's some ZZ Raven back there. And then this is just some Epipernum Aureum or some golden pothos that I kind of just like let grow all over the place. This is a Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8. It still needs to get a pot. Don't judge me that it's still in the nursery pot. And some philodendron chordatum, or just your standard Hartley philodendron. And then some neon pothos, or a pippinum aureum. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we got through that whole shelf. Let me kind of step back and give you guys a look at that whole shelf, because it is <laughs> wild. Sorry, don't judge me, I'm in my sweat shorts, but, you know, I wasn't planning on filming myself from the waist down. So, yeah, this is my shelf. It is a total mess. It's total craziness <laughs> but I love it so there's a look at that shelf I think I gave you guys a look at the first shelf already in full so now we're gonna work our way over here I'm literally just standing on my bed as I show you guys this stuff so let's go down here this is a another Calathea Rufa Barba I mentioned in the last video that I really liked the way it's been growing for me so next to the Calathea Rufa Barba is this Stromanthe Stromantoides Charlie I think I mentioned in the plant hall when I got this plant, I was like, I'm gonna kill it in a month. It's still alive. It's it's lost a lot of its foliage, but this is a brand new plant that came up out of the, the pot. So, you know, I have at least this plant if the rest of it dies. And then this is a Dithambachia reflector. I found this big pot of it at a Lowe's. So I've been seeing it go for a pretty penny online. So I couldn't, not really a big Dithambachia person, but I know this is a find. So I was like, eh. Let me get it. And this is Schaflera actinophila amate. And then I have a Dracaena Janet Craig up here, which is kind of a rescue from my work because they got coal damage. So I brought what was left of it home. And actually now it's doing pretty good. And it looks it looks really good, actually. Um, Monstera adansoni. I have a nice full pot of it right here. So now we're going to go over to the window. And before we get up close, I'm just going to show you guys the Monstera Deliciosa that I have right there. That is one that I propagated from three mature cuttings that I just put in the same pot. And I really, really love the way it looks now. Probably going to get a lot of light while we go into the window. So this is a Cissus Quadrangularis. I really love the way it's like segmented as it grows up. It's really funky. Really, really funky plant. And then a Peperomia Orba Variegata. And then a begonia. So this is begonia benigo. So it's got some lovely pink foliage. You can see it best on here. Or, or purple foliage more so with pink dots on it. So that's a really lovely one. Then this is peperomia polybotria. My a bit larger one. Actually the leaves are smaller on this one. But I'd say overall it's a bit of a larger plant than the one I showed you guys in part one. And then, oh boy, there we go with the light. So this one right here is one of my favorites. It's Peperomia incana. It's a very fuzzy Peperomia. I really love it. I'd really love to see more of this on the market, but unfortunately I don't. Another Peperomia grisio argentia, or the pink lady Peperomia. There's a little bit of Peperomia graviolens hiding down there. And then some Sansevieria honeyi. I think this one is golden honeyi. I'm not too sure actually on the name of this one, but I love this Sansevieria. One of my favorite birds in the Sansevierias. And then my Peperomia, this is my unnamed Peperomia from Ecuador. My Hoya Carii. This is a lovely plant right here. This is Cissus rotundifolia. Ponytail palm or a Bocarnia recurvata. And then my Peperomia fairy ray. It's kind of one of those more succulent Peperomias. And then I've got to pull back this leaf and I can show you guys the Peperomia rubella down there, which is that red plant, and then the little blue cactus that my plant friend Alicia gave me recently, which is a really lovely little blue cactus. And now we gotta work our way up the window. So, growing all around the window is Scandapsis pictus, which is growing in this pot, and I've had it for a really long time, so it's really bare right here, but then as it goes all around the window, then we have a lot of the foliage. So one day I'll probably give this guy a nice chop and propagate it, but uh, it really doesn't bother me the way it is right now. Right over here is some Sedum Little Missy, a really lovely little trailing succulent. Really lovely one. 
And then in the window, I have a dying Dishidia, um, what is it, Ovada. And then this is some Peperomia, sorry, there's a Peperomia getting in the way. Peperomia meridiana, and then a little Pilea Peperomioides. I know it's kind of bright, but I think you guys get an idea of what they look like. Oh, and then we have all these ones hanging in the window. So this one right here is Peperomia, what is this one? Oh god, oh, Peperomia trinervus. So actually a really lovely Peperomia. I don't see this one that often. It's more of like a botanical garden species, but I love it. It's really great. But then I have this one getting tangled in it right here. That's my Peperomia ruby cascade, which gets the red on the back. But if I flip it over, you can see it's got some round green leaves. It kind of looks a lot like wire vine, but has a lot more character in my opinion. Then this is a Tradescantia zebrina or wandering Jew plant. Then there is a, another Tetrastigma voinierianum up here, just the cutting I've been growing. Oh and my gosh, we're at the last plant. Okay, so the last plant in this video is going to be this Philodendron scandens or Philodendron cordatum, and this is the lemon lime version. So it's been growing really, really well for me. I really love the leaves. They are just, I love how vibrant they are. Alrighty, we just went through and I showed you guys all of my 350 plus houseplants. I'm sure I missed a few here and there, but for the most part I think I hit them all, which was quite a task. It was a learning experience for both of us because I got to see which plants needed to be watered and I also learned that I need to get more shelves because I am out of space and we are totally stuffed to the gills in here as you saw. So. It's time to get more shells, but that's for another day. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.